Now, don't forget, you're dining with us on the 14th. Oh, are we? Yes, 8.30 black time. We're so looking forward to seeing you. Oh, what fun. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. But what a tremendous success. Was it? Oh, tremendous. My dear, you look worn out. Wouldn't you better go to bed? Where are the men? Out there on the drive. I shall have some coffee, I think, and some eggs and bacon. What about you? No, no, Beatrice, I don't think I will, thank you. You looked very charming in your blue. Everyone said so. And nobody had an inkling about the other thing, so you mustn't worry. No. I should have a long lie in bed tomorrow. Have your breakfast in bed. Don't attempt to get up. Yes, perhaps. I'll tell Maxim you've gone up, shall I? Oh, yes, please, Beatrice. All right. Sleep well. Mm. Mm.
You've done what you wanted, haven't you? Are you pleased? Are you happy? Why did you ever come here? Nobody wanted you at Mandalay. You seem to forget that I love Mr. De Winter. If you loved him, you'd never have married him. I thought I hated you, but I don't now. It seems to have spent itself all the feeling I had. Why should you hate me? What have I ever done that you should hate me? You tried to take Mrs. De Winter's place. That's not true. I gave no orders. I had nothing changed. I left everything to you. Well, it was no crime for us to marry. Haven't we as much right to be happy as anyone else? Mr. De Winter's not happy. Any fool can see that. Look at his eyes. He's been in hell ever since she died. We were happy when we were in France together. No man denies himself on his honeymoon. How dare you speak like that to me? How dare you? You made me wear that dress last night, didn't you? I should never have thought of it, but for you. You did it because you wanted to hurt Mr. De Winter. You wanted to make him suffer. Well, hasn't he suffered enough? What do I care for his suffering? He's never cared about mine. How do you think I've liked it? Watching you sit in her place, touch the things that were hers. What do you think it's meant to me to hear Frith and Robert and the rest of the servants talking about you as Mrs. De Winter? Mrs. De Winter is dead. My lady is dead. But he knows she sees him. He knows she comes by night and watches him. And she doesn't come kindly, not she, not my lady. She was never one to stand mute and still and be wronged. I had care of her as a child. Did you know that? What's the use, Mrs. Dumas? I don't want to hear. No one ever got the better of her. Never. Not even then. Not even when she was a child. She did what she liked. She lived as she liked. Oh, she had courage, too. All the courage and spirit of a boy. I remember her at 16 getting up on one of her father's horses, a big brute of an animal that the groom said was too hot for her to handle. She stuck him all right. I can see her now with her hair flying out behind her, slashing at him, drawing blood, digging the spurs into his sides. And when she got off his back, he was trembling all over, full of froth and blood. That'll teach him, won't it, Danny, she said, and walked off to wash her hands as cool as you please. And that's how she went at life when she grew up. I was with her. I saw her. She cared for nothing and for no one. And then when she was finally beaten, it wasn't a man and it wasn't a woman. Only the sea was strong enough for my lady. Only the sea. Mrs. Danvers. Oh, Mrs. Danvers, you're not well. Well, you ought to be in bed. I'll go to your... Oh, place. leave me alone, can't you? What's it to you if I show my grief? I'm not ashamed of it. You talk of making him happy. You think you can take her place? You, you take my lady's place? Why, even the servants laugh when you came to Mandalay, even the scullery maids. I wonder what Mr. De Winter thought when he got you back here after that happy honeymoon. I wonder what he thought when he saw you sitting at the dining room table for the first time, sitting in her place. I wonder what That's he thought... That's enough, Mrs. Thomas. You better go to your room. Go to my room. Go to my room. The mistress of the house thinks I'd better go to my room. You can't give orders in this house. You'll never get the better of her. She's still mistress here, even if she is dead. She's the real Mrs. De Winter, not you. It's you that's the shadow and the ghost. It's you that's forgotten and not wanted and pushed aside. Why don't you leave Manderley to her? Why don't you go? Why don't you go? I mean, none of us want you here. He doesn't want you. He never did. He can't forget her. He wants to be alone in the house again with her. It's you who ought to be dead. Not Mrs. De Winter. It's a quick, kind way, not like drowning. Why don't you jump? Don't be afraid. I won't push you. Jump of your own accord. You're not happy. Mr. De Winter doesn't love you. Jump now and be done with it. It's a quick, kind way.
look it. There must be a ship gone ashore in the bay. You better go down. Be careful with your hands and you to shut the window. It's a good thing there's no sea running. There wouldn't have been much chance for them then. But on a day like this, there's no danger. When you see Mr. De Winter, madam, will you tell him it'll be quite all right if he wants to bring the men back from the ship? There'll be a hot meal ready for them at any time. Yes, Mrs. Douglas. you finished with the tray, madam? Oh, yes, thank you, Robert. You've not eaten all day, madam. Is there anything I can get you? No, thank you. Well, have you seen Mr. De Winter at all? Only very briefly, madam. He came back for some cigarettes and then went straight down to the beach again. Captain Sowell is here waiting to see him. Captain Sowell? The harbour master of Kerith. Oh, ask him to come in. Perhaps there's something I can do. Very good, madam. Captain Silver. Mrs. De Winter, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Captain. What a dreadful thing to have happened. Well, it could have been much worse. The men are all safe, thank God, and there are no serious injuries. Well, what about the ship? Badly holed. She'll not see Hamburg again. Do sit down, won't you? Thank you, Mrs. Winter. Hello, dogs. I'm so sorry my husband's not here. Well, to tell you the truth, I don't know where he is. He's been in and out all day. So I gather from Mr. Crawley. Is there anything I can do? Well, I'm not too sure. I don't want to cause you any distress, Mrs. De Winter. That's the last thing I'd want to do. Distress? Well, what do you mean, distress? What's happened? I think I'd better wait until your husband gets back. No, please tell me, please. Yes, perhaps I should. We sent a diver down to inspect the damage. While he was down there, he came across the hull of a small sailing boat, lying on a side, quite intact, not broken up at all. He's a local man, of course, and he recognized the boat at once. It was the boat belonging to the late Mrs. De Winter. I see. I see. Well, Captain Sell, must we tell my husband? Well, can't the boat be left there as it is? It's not doing any harm, is it? There's a bit more to it.